we're rocking. Oh wait, let me get gallery view on because I don't know how this will be, I'll record. There we go. Bonjour. Bonjour. Very. Uh, it been? It's been. It's been all right. It's, it's been, been all right. It's been. It's yeah. um. It's nice that we can see people again in gardens. Mm. But somebody forgot to tell the weather that. Yeah. Which I don't mind at the minute because. Uh, we were chatting about this earlier, weren't we? The, the infection rate is actually above one in the northwest yeah, now. In the northwest, it's gone and in, in, in down south as well. Yeah, and the southwest, it's like at, at around one. So for me, they yeah, great. Let let it rain so that people don't be out partying and and whatnot like they have been mm. doing. Yeah. Um. Recently. Um. But yeah, it's been a mad old week, hasn't it? Obviously, the news has been a bit crazy this week. Yeah. Um, Black Lives Matters protests and stuff, which. Uh, I'm fully behind, like, you know, yeah, of course. It, obviously it's a weird, it's a weird time, um, with, with what's going on with the pandemic and stuff, but mm. they've got, they've got the eyes and the ears of, of, of everyone now. And that's what I think. Yeah. I think it needed it. it, needed it. Yeah. 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 I think it's, um, it's obviously tragic what happened in America and yeah. has been happening for a long time. Um, yeah, and I think it's about. I think well, it, it, it was time a long time ago now, but I think a lot of people are sort of opening their eyes a bit more now, aren't they? And, yeah, 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 and even little things like obviously today, so it's, it's Sunday as recording this. The statue of uh, I think it's Eric Summit or other who was a, uh, a a slave trader in uh, Bristol's been pulled down. A fucking mint. Why is it? Why wasn't that pulled down months ago? Uh, years ago. Um, but yeah. Anyway, we, you know. Um, this podcast isn't the news. <laughs> no, 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 we hope no. we hope to be a, a little bit of obviously, you know, as much as I, I, you know, keep up with current affairs. It's nice to have a little bit of escapism from it, and that's what mm. uh, we've tried to do. Obviously, um, all our guests, as we keep saying, we're, we're recording via Skype, so the COVID, the the lockdown, all that stuff kind of um, raises its head every now and again, um, and. I think we chatted a little bit. I can't remember much, but I think we did chat a little bit with Gemma about it, didn't we? In the podcast, yeah, just about how like what she's been doing. She's been exercising a lot and things, um, things like that, keeping herself entertained. But yeah, it's kind of what we did try. Mm-hmm. And obviously, when we started series two, yeah, we, obviously we we was at the beginning of lockdown, weren't we? So it was kind of like it was very much a talking point for a lot of people. Um, and then as the sort of as the series progressed, we sort of people are trying now to sort of try and get their lives back to some form of normality, aren't they? So yeah, it's kind of like it sort of thistled out a little bit, and the chat about lockdown and things like that, which is good because it gives the listeners sort of an hour and 20 minutes to get away from, uh, from what's going on if possible. Yeah. Um, and, th- and, and this week, obviously we've got a guest who, um, you know, th- this time last year, uh, I just finished, like probably what was what was mostly in the news this time last year, Game of Thrones ending. Um, Gemma uh, played Yara Greyjoy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, f- amazing, amazing. Like, I, I, think, I don't think, I don't think there's been a series up that's been up there that actually made me. At the end of every episode, I've literally have my head in my hands. Like, yeah. what have I just watched? Like, it for me, it, it was. Now, whenever I watch a great series, I'm watching, um, I've just finished Gangs of London on Sky Atlantic. Oh, yeah. That, for me, is one of the only series that's come close to actually, and I, can't, oh, really? I, go, I go, yeah, oh, yeah, it's, it's up there with Game of Thrones for me. I've um, not yet, I've not watched it yet. Um, I think we've right. said this a few times, haven't we? I've just not, not watched many frigging um, series while, while, while all this has happened, just because it's just time. But yeah, that's definitely one of the watch lists. I definitely need to watch it. But yeah, same Game of Thrones uh, is one of, like, before I started watching Game of Thrones, it was like Breaking Bad was that series. That was like, you're never going to top Breaking Bad. No. And, and Game of Thrones is a different series, whether it tops it or not, up for debate. Personally, uh, yeah, I, think I think it does. Every episode of Game of Thrones, it, it just got better and better yeah. and better. Um, I know they've got a lot of stick for series A. Was it eight they got a lot of stick for? Is that the one you were in? <laughs> no, I was in seven. Um, um, I don't know. I don't know. Was it was that the last series? Yeah, I think a lot of people were saying it, it could have been better, blah, 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 with the ending. And Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, I thought it was brilliant. I thought it was great. I mean, I, I think a, a couple of things could have been a bit better. 
Um, but that's not to take away the the, the hard work that went into that. I mean, it yeah. was just... And, and I think we say at the top of this, um, when, when we're talking to Gemma as well, Gemma was... Uh, she, she randomly followed me on Twitter uh, ages ago. Um, and when, when she followed me... Um, because I'm sure at the time, a Twitter profile, I'm just looking at it now, um, professional rib tickler. I mean, she does, I think she does a bit of stand-up. Oh, so really? I seen that and I was like, oh, who's this? And then I clicked and I was like, oh, it's bloody Gemma Whelan. It's, it's Yara, uh, Yara Greyjoy. And like, she, like I remember when, like watching that first episode that she was in, I think it was like series two or something, with Alfie Allen. Yeah. And like, just going, yeah, she's sick. Like she's yeah. sick because there's so many strong female leads in that show. Yeah. You know, you, you Maisie Williams. You've got your, uh, uh, forgive me, I don't know actor names, but you've got like Cersei, um, you know, Cat loads, and then and then um, Yara is is one of the most badass gals. Yeah, she's in it as so well. cool. And uh, yeah, when she come on, as soon as she. I think is the first scene is when Aaron Alfie Allen are riding the horse along. Is that, yeah. Is that right? yeah. And, and, and he doesn't like, know it's his sister, does he? And gets so a bit like, weird. magnetic and powerful. Like she's mm. just, um, and, like you said, just so strong as well, which is mm. what Game of Thrones have always been good at. And a lot of other things as well. He's giving the females like a very powerful storyline yeah. and, and for them to be, you know, strong and tough. Uh, mm. So yeah. I think Who run the world, Tomo? Pardon? Who run the world? Uh, girls. Girls. Who run the world? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I mean, yeah, yeah exactly. Um, and, and, and like I say, someone who, who we've wanted on the, sh- the, the podcast for ages. Um, and again, someone who's just mega busy. She doesn't stop. Um, yeah. You know, other stuff that, that she's done, like the uh, Moorcroft, um, plenty of other stuff. Like she's, she just doesn't stop. And I think she said she was filming sort of while this was, was going on. She was doing a play. She was doing a play. Yeah, so. um, and, and we talk a little bit how that affected her, you know, which is, you know, something crazy again. But, um, yeah, just again, just another great chat. And, and as we said, there's a whole list of things. Gemma, Gemma couldn't come up with one thing. We've put... Uh, which is getting... what we love, though. I love that. I love that they've come on with more than one subject. Exactly, because everyone has a fair few gripes. Um, so Gemma sent me the list and she was like, here's my long list. Fancy dress, Tiger King, boxing, potty training, getting dressed, karaoke. And I was like, that's brilliant. That's just, that's loads to talk about. Cause, cause... I think getting dressed, not just getting dressed in the morning, but getting dressed up as well, I think it's bullshit. Yeah, I don't, I don't like suits and that, me. Not a fan. It's like if you go to award ceremonies and shit, I think, don't get me wrong, I don't mind wearing a suit, but then sometimes I think, oh, I just... No, I, I feel smart if I'm wearing a pair of jeans or whatever, but then... Yeah, you're not comfy, are you? in a lot of places. And I just think, nah, it's bullshit, that. Nah. Yeah, I don't like dress codes, me. I think, I no. think it... Uh... Dress code is no, house, no hats in the house, normally. My dad always used to tell me off for that. It's because my hair's a mess. I've got... Um, I've just been <laughs> playing golf. I've just finished, so I'm a bit like... <laughs> um, anyway, let's crack on. Um, so, again, guys, as always... Um, there's a little bit of time left after the podcast. Please stick around. We'll tell you who's next week's guest and uh, chat a little bit, debrief kind of thing. But for now, um, episode 10 with Gemma Whelan. We're on. We're on team. Yeah. Um, we've got uh, a guest with us today that we've, I think, originally, Gemma, I think I messaged you like way back when the podcast began. And like, I think at the time you were like just a new mum and was kind of like, I'm busy, obviously. And like, now we've finally got you. So it's, it's been a while, but it's amazing to have you. I hope Thanks. it's not a disappointment. No, I, um, absolutely not. It was, it was, it was young. I'm just trying to look at my phone to see when it was. It doesn't really matter. It was yonks ago anyway. Yonks ago. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Glad to, it takes a lockdown to bring us together. Well, that's it. I mean, you know, one, one kind of positive from this is we've, we've got to speak to some amazing people, obviously yourself included, who, you know, either live like the other end of the country or, you know, just schedule wise with, with the three yeah. wouldn't have ever got together. So that's been kind of 
nice i guess yeah it's nice isn't it like what might take sort of four or five hours round trip for me anyway and for you like a whole day and a, and a night maybe just um sit sit down of an evening in your with own bright, with a bright red face <laughs> so you've been for a run you said just off off my did, i did try i mean if you can call it running <laughs> uh, sort of a, a wobble around the park but I, f- I feel better for it it's a wobble around the park more than i've done so. i am um, i feel terrible but it's our, our wedding anniversary today but we both forgot Oh, congratulations! But I'm gonna have a, I'm gonna have a little rum and coke later on, but I feel like I've got to run around the park first to earn it. To earn yeah. it, yeah, yeah. yeah. Get so. It's getting like that now, isn't it? Whenever I feel like, say, if I want to have like a chippy or something, I'm like, yeah, well, maybe I should go out on the bike tomorrow. Maybe I should yeah. do something. Yeah, better do something. Maybe watch the Joe Wicks thing. Not not take part. Have a just look. watch. For the mind. Yeah, and have a look at what could have been. <laughs> yeah. We were just talking about Joe Wicks um, before we did the uh, before we started recording and. Uh, all admiring his hard work. He's done so well, though, hasn't he? He's, he's raised a lot of money. Yeah, and that, he donated so much to the NHS from from his PE class. Like he's just brilliant. He's just he's got his um his moral compass in the right direction. I think he's a fantastic man. Hundred percent. Yeah, he's great. He's great. But anyway, we're not here to talk about him. We're here to talk <laughs> about you. How's um how's life in general? Have you uh have you before lockdown was you was you busy working? I was in the middle of doing a West End production of Upstart Crow. No. Uh, it was a, that's a BBC uh, sitcom that I was in with David Mitchell that sort of transferred to stage, and we were five weeks into an eleven-week run, and it just stopped. Like bang in the middle. But like it's kind of weird. I think in hindsight now, looking back, it's mad that we got away with do- not got away with it, but that we did it for so long because it was towards the end of March, wasn't it? Yeah. And then um, like crowds and crowds of people just you know luckily we we were selling out, and so it's just masses of people. And looking back, it's like. Yeah. That's so yeah. wrong. But we had fun and we got great reviews. <laughs> <laughs> so, like, yeah, we're... I was in the middle of that and uh, just stopped. So is there any plans to go back to that? Because obviously with the theatre, it's, it's kind yeah. of, it's, it's different to if you're, on a, if you're on a film or if you're on a series because there is sort of the option to go back depending on people's availability. But yeah. I guess it's the same with theatre. Obviously, you've got to book out the rooms and you've got, to, obviously with the ticket sales and things, it, can, it, can you go back and just pick that up? We, there's a great deal of goodwill and hope that we can go back but um uh and there seems to be noises made that like if and when it's possible we will um but when are the theaters going to be ready to receive crowds again i don't know that's it i guess they're going to be one of the, the sort of, unfortunately one of the the last aren't they i guess yeah yeah mm. i think i think tv might come back as yeah. and when I don't, I don't know i heard a rumor that line of duty were going again this summer trying to carry on what they started in the summer, but I don't know. Oh, really? I read um, I read something in was it Screen International or Screen Daily that they was that the um that there was talks of films and TV series and things being able to go back um, and start you? filming. But I guess I mean, it has to be scaled down, doesn't it? Do you know, I just yeah. can't see how that's, I can't see how it's going to work. Like. You're probably not going to have your you know your your Marvel films shooting straight away, or, or even like you know like game anything that's sort of big with big casts, and then. You know, you look at your Marvel films, Robert Downey Jr. probably has five people making him coffee, don't they? It's going to have to be scaled right down. He's have to have one, isn't he? Right, he's he going to have one. to make it himself. I mean, I've got two, so I don't know what my dad's going to do. No. But, yeah, I mean, it's going to have to be kind of short, like, you know, short film style crews, I guess. Yeah. That's so kind of nice, though, isn't it? Yeah. And it's start in June on the second series of Gentleman Jack as well, but they've, they've suggested that might be just September now, but again... We don't know anything. People are just being hopeful, aren't they? It's kind of nice, though. I, there's something I, lo- I love about I love doing short films because yeah. everyone's there for the, for the same reason. No one's there for the money. Everyone's there because they, they want to make something that yeah, they no, believe is going to be great. Mm. Um, so if that kind of happens, that'll be good. Yeah. yeah so. small cruise Did you see, I didn't see any of those um, <clears throat> ITV dramas that were shot at home, like Sheridan's and that. Did yeah, you see I sat and watched it yesterday. What's it like? She, she's unbelievable. She's incredible. I, mean, I haven't seen it, but I'm, I'm, I've heard she's incredible in it. But She's amazing, yeah. She's, she's really amazing. amazing. She's from like, Scunthorpe, which is right near me. And because she's literally just had a little boy, hasn't she? So yeah, I think last week. She must have, like, obviously it was only a couple of weeks ago she mm-hmm. shot it. Oh, wow. Like, yeah, she was pregnant whilst yeah. doing it. And it, it's, yeah. about a, it's about a pregnant lady, yeah. 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 Fair play, fair play. I mean... Wow, that's a, a, a testament to the amazing actress that she is anyway. Yeah, she's yeah. amazing. Yeah. Must be so it's something to do with northerners, I'm telling you, mate. I'm telling you. I'm from Headingley originally. <laughs> oh, is that where you're from? Originally? Yeah, I'm from Headingley. 
Uh, where do you live now? Do you live, do you live in London now? In London, yeah, in, in London, yeah. But, um, oh, nice. How long have you been down there? I was born in Headingley and lived there for my first eight years. Nice. So, Whereabouts is Headingley? It's Leeds, really near Leeds. Oh, Leeds, yeah. Well. You've done well to shape the accent. Yeah, I don't know. My mum's Canadian and my dad's Irish. Well, dad was Irish. Um, he's dead, everyone. So oh, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> shouldn't be laughing this I? is the first awkward moment on overrated everything anyway no, it's not yeah. awkward at all it's not <laughs> awkward at all he'd, he'd be delighted to be spoken about but oh. um yeah so i don't know i, I didn't ever have an accent i think my mum really wanted us to not ha we, we moved to birmingham after uh, when when i was eight and i think she was very keen that we didn't have birmingham accents yeah oh that's yeah fair play i do, I do understand I, c I can do it but i'm glad that i don't have yeah. it yeah. Yeah, you only do it when you absolutely have to. Yeah, when I have to. Yeah, yeah, bad. It's a great city, though, Birmingham, isn't it? I, do you know what? I, I, with great respect to it, I don't like it very much because it's oh, really? so badly designed. I feel no, there's no heart to it, really. Yeah, because it. it's so big as well, mm -hmm. though. It's so big. Like my brother lives in, um, he lives in Sutton Coalfield, just outside. Yeah. So that little area is beautiful. But I, I know what you mean when you go into the city centre. It's kind of like. I don't know where I am. Yeah. Yeah, it's just, yeah, I know what you're saying. It's kind of got that empty feel to it, hasn't it, really? Yeah. There's no heart of it. Bizarre. But I, I love the gay village down there. That's my favourite place in the world. It's my I brother's gay, so we go yeah. down there for nights out all the time. And it's so much fun. So much fun. When, when isn't a gay night out fun, you know? Exactly. They always are the, the best <laughs> nights out, aren't they? Never any hassle. <laughs> it's never a problem. No, no, it's all good. It's all Not that good. I've been out for years now, but you know, when oh. I did. <laughs> Back you, you miss going out? Um, no, I'm all right, actually. I think, yeah, I think I agree with Vicky McClure's one, where she said it's overrated going out, you know? Yeah. yeah I'm getting it's getting in. It's, it's, I think it's, it's, it's an age thing, isn't it? I think you like, might be right, you, yeah. As you get older, you kind of like, the idea, I've just, I've just been watching a film and there was a shot of outside of the club and there was a huge queue of people to get in. And I said to Charlotte, my wife, I was like, I don't ever want to do it. Why, why do people wait for 40 minutes in a queue to get into a rammed club yeah. to, never, to never get a drink? It's like, I just don't never see it. You not be able to hear each other. Well, that's it. I was just getting old, I guess. I think we might be. That's all right, though. <laughs> we are. We are indeed. I'm just going to turn my baby monitor off because I've just realised it's on. Don't worry, my wife's upstairs. But... Oh, <laughs> <laughs> the one-year-old. These are the things that I don't ever have to worry about. The only things that I... Like, like, during these times, throughout the day, I have to say to myself, I've got a little checklist. I'm like, right, have you brushed your teeth? Yeah. <laughs> have you had a shower? Yeah. Right, okay. Right, what day do the bins go out? So I've got a little... A little yeah, well, like the most know. easy thing going. Whereas you know, you've but you just got to times it by how many kids you've got. Have you brushed your teeth, right? Have you brushed their teeth? Yeah. yeah. Oh, bloody hell, brushing teeth. Yeah, it's bad, isn't it? <laughs> Is it like pandemonium? <laughs> this is just, it's a daily battle. I don't, it's a daily battle. For you or for you or for the young one? Uh, the for young her. one. Oh. Yeah, my husband will let me brush his teeth, but uh, <laughs> <laughs> he's a good boy. <laughs> but we, um, when you sent over your subjects, we thought it was great. There was a, there was a few that we loved. Well, I mean, all of them really. It's like yeah, we we said this. I don't know if you heard. Um, I think it was on. Was it Shane's? Like a lot of people like give us a load of subjects, and it's it's just so much better because, mm. like I say, like there's just there's just so much more to chat about. And like, it was him. It was him that inspired me to think. Oh, you're allowed more than one. Well, I just throw yeah. them a list, and then they can choose one. Or if you want to talk about more than one or whatever, then get them all in. Get yeah, them all in. All in. And it's one of the of... You, uh, that you've that you've put here is something that we kind of glanced, touched on, on chains. But we'll if we go in order of, of how you sent them. I don't know if that was was the order. No, in... it was literally as they came to me. <laughs> I love it. I love it. So the first one being fancy dress. <laughs> Your face says it all. Oh, what's the point? <laughs> Tell me. No... Go on. Tell me a, a funny fancy dress story of a time when something's happened to you at a fancy dress or you've been stung or is there anything that... that yes. That oh, go on. Can we hear it? Yes. I don't know how this happened. And I think this is why I'm haunted by fancy dress. But I remember my primary school were running like a, a harvest festival day. And I don't know why, but my... <laughs> 
my mum had not got the memo that it was prisoners and ball and chain. I don't know if it was Harvest Festival, whatever it was. All the kids were to go as like fancy dress in ball and chains, prisoners, chain gang kind of thing. I don't, I don't know why, but it, that was the theme. Suits and that sort of thing. My mother, no word of a lie, dressed me as Wurzel Gummidge. <laughs> and it was a wicked costume. I'm telling you, it was absolutely, she, might, she really is a, a seamstress and she's brilliant, my mum. She would always send me, you know, really turned out things, but I was dressed as Wurzel Gummidge and <laughs> every other child in the whole school was dressed in, you know, black and white stripes. And I, <laughs> I don't know how she missed it, but I think from, from that day forward, as I, and, then, and then it mm. sort of, it, it went over into mufty days, you know, when you could go non-uniform to school. Yeah, yeah. And that just used to stress me out so much. Like, because I've, I've got an interesting, I, I did have an interesting taste in clothing. I, my mother dressed me. And, Define you know, it interesting. Define interesting. It interesting. Uh, just, just she, she sort of, I think she thought I was always four years old. Um, <laughs> and so I was very, I was dressed very juvenile in dungarees and flowery shirts. And I, and I quite liked it, but the people weren't very nice to me about it. And so on Mufti days and, and that kind of thing, I was too, uh, I didn't want to hurt her feelings by not wearing what she suggested I wore, but it was, they were just painful. So like Mufti, Mufti days and fancy dress, I think it's because of the words of gummish thing. Yeah. Um, but she would send me as a cleaning lady to fancy dress parties when I was like five years old with a fag in my mouth. Like she, <laughs> Honestly, one of those, one of those like, cigarettes. We're, like, we're looking like um, Hilda Ogden with a, with a headscarf on, with loads of blue eyeshadow, and my mum's petticoats and a fag in my mouth. I was five. That would be like now. <laughs> All the other kids were like dressed as swans and princesses. But I mean, I suppose it's you know it's been formative. But I do not like fancy dress. That that would be like um, all over. Like, uh, did you see that? Um, was it World Book Day when someone sent the kid dressed as uh, Mr. Grey from? Uh, the book, what's 50 it called? Shades. 50 Shades. <laughs> really? Charlotte's just shouted that. I don't know that. <laughs> <laughs> but that would have been, if, if, if social media would have been kind of rife back then, yeah. you would have been definitely shared around like with a fucking... I would have been that. shared around. I would have been absolutely shared around and we've still got the photograph oh. at my mum's house, but <clears> good <throat> God. We want... Well, speaking of World Book Day, one of the, which is very... Um, sort of transgressive of the woman, I suppose, the mother, but she, my Francis nursery, one of the boys went as Dolly Parton. Oh, and wow. he had satsumas in his chest pockets. It was a, it Is was it a little cool? bit borderline. It was a bit it's weird. Creative. It's creative. It's, it's creative. Was this but he you... hadn't asked to go as it. If he'd asked, I'd, I'd understand. I'd be like, wicked, good lad. But she had imposed it, which I thought was a bit, but maybe it's, maybe it's progressive. I don't know. What's the book? Has she got an Good point. Oh. Although Dolly Parton has got um, a, a, a book scheme down here in London. I don't know if it's okay. it, definitely in our borough. Weirdly, she sends a book to every child in the borough every month, suitable to their age. It's a free thing. Oh, it's wow. not just her. She's it's sponsored by many people, but she started it. Oh, and I wow. don't know why. It's really weird. So maybe that's why. Maybe. That's amazing, isn't it? Dolly Parton, oh. like, as in the, as in Dolly Parton. As in Dolly Parton. As in real nine to five Dolly Parton, yeah. Yeah. So crazy. Yeah. What's your worst fancy dress experience, Andy? I'm keen to know. So when my mum was pretty much like yours, like my mum is like really talented at like just fabricating, like always yeah. last minute, always last minute, like making, you know, uh, fancy dress costumes and, and stuff like that. So one year um, I'd read... Uh, it was World Book Day, I think, and I'd read uh, the Twits, Roald Dahl's the Twits, but a, a couple who just don't get on, and, and it's really funny. Anyway, yeah. it goes Mr. Twit, and he's got this really long beard. So my mum uh, went up into my grandma's loft, and you know pot dolls? She like yeah. shaved, yeah, you know, like um, sort of like porcelain dolls. Like the, the creepy ones, the people. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. So my mum used to have them years ago, and they ended up in my grandma's loft, so my mum kind of raided my grandma's loft and cut all the hair off these pot dolls. They was all antique then. Well, they, I bet they'd be worth something now. <laughs> Made this like really long beard that went all the way down to my feet. Like it was amazing. Anyway. <laughs> did it smell? Well, <laughs> funny you should say that because the next day, I uh, was the, obviously World Book Day at school. I was sat in assembly. I can still remember it vividly now. I must have been about six at the oldest. Um, and I'm sat in assembly and I, and I could just smell dog poo, like really, really strong. Oh, no. And this beard literally went down to like my feet. 
So what I'd done is I'd sort of stepped in dog poo or something on the way to school oh. and then kind of trampled it into the beard. So like the whole bottom of the beard was just full of like... Oh uh, my God. Accident, which, well, that's, yeah. that's really authentic, Mr. Twit, because he's filthy. Yeah, exactly. So it's brilliant. Yeah, you went method. But I admire I, you. <laughs> it suits Mr. Twit, but a six-year-old in a council estate in Manchester didn't get didn't get treated. Kind of. Not a lot of love. <laughs> I'm a big I'm a big fan of fancy dress. Me are you? What, what, what are your stories? What, what, what are your hits then? What's your favourite thing to dress up as? I mean, there was there was one thing that me when me and Charlotte bought our first house. It was about five years ago, and you know you do the typical housewarming party. Um, so what we did is we said to everyone, it's going to be fancy dress. We said to everyone, go, go and get your fancy dresses. And we all went online and found these fancy dress costumes and we screenshotted them and put them into the group chat. So everybody thought that it was, um, everybody thought that it was going to be fancy dress. But what we did is we got one couple, Andy and Gemma, we made sure nobody else dressed in fancy dress. Oh, sorry. So what they've done <laughs> is on the day, and Andy and Gemma are the, are the, the least organised people in the world. So on the morning of the party, they're like, shit, we haven't got anything. And we're all like, well, we're dressing up, mate. So you need to go get something. So we got in his car and he drove to Hull and, re- and hired out some costumes. Hull's about a 40-minute drive from here. So him and Gemma dressed up as, <laughs> as Danny Zuko and um, uh, what's the girl from Greece called? Andy. Danny? Sorry? Sandy, isn't it? Sandy, yeah, Sandy and Danny Zuko. So we're all in the back garden waiting eagerly for Andy and Gemma to pull up. So they walk down the drive in fancy dress. And we're all just stood there in our, like, jeans and shorts. <laughs> oh, God. <laughs> so that was, like... It's my worst nightmare. But that's put me on edge now. If people say, let's do fancy dress now, I'm like... Ooh. Yeah, because you're definitely due a payback for that. Yeah, yeah. What about you, Gemma? Like, do you do you attend fancy dress parties if you're invited? It must be good for you party? because then no one knows who you are. You can put a mask on and no one knows who you no are. No one knows who I am anyway. <laughs> but um, but the biggest TV show of like all time, Gemma. Come on. I don't, I don't, I, I, honestly, I get some weird looks. Like people think they maybe went to school with me or something, but not much. Um, <clears throat> But uh, I, I would avoid them. I would avoid, if it was a fancy dress party, I'd avoid it. And if it was absolutely necessary to go, then I would make a token gesture. Like if it was 70s or something, maybe I'd like, I don't know, put some beads on. Some long, <laughs> weird beads. Big sunglasses or something. Or some big sunglasses. So that would be it, a tribute. Yeah. I mean, I, I don't know me because I, I really do like... Yeah, I, really, I really embrace it when, when we get to do it. We like yeah. go all out. <laughs> I'm, but I'm, I love my costumes at work. Like to, to yeah. dress up at work, it's the best. It's so yeah. like it informs everything well, that you are. That's what at work. Our job is it's just a fancy dress yeah. party all day. So maybe that's why work. it's like I get to do that at work as well. I don't. I don't need to dress as a cleaning lady at home. Maybe you. Yeah, maybe you feel like it's uh, it's work then mixing work and pleasure a bit too much. No, I, I think I'm just haunted by Wells of Gummidge. <laughs> <laughs> um, I've got to say it now because uh, I did. On my twenty fifth, I had a, I had a Game of Thrones themed fancy dress. Oh, you did! <laughs> yeah. Who did you go as? Um, or uh, again. So here's another shit um, fancy dress story. So I wanted to go as obviously because I look like him, uh, Carl Drogo. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> you do look like him. I thought that exactly. Oh, um, so I was going to say Jon Snow. I'd grown <laughs> a beard for a couple of uh, a couple of weeks, not months. Long. Well, yeah, and um, and you can't get Amelia <laughs> Clark out of your DMs, can you, man? I mean, she's just—it's incredible. Well, um, my friend, who's a hairdresser, um, she said to me, she said, "Oh, do you want me to tint your beard?" So I was like, "That's a thing, yeah." So it was like, make it black. So I was like, "Yeah, that, that'd be cool." So she did it, and she kind of came around. She was like, "Do you want to do a skin test?" And I was like, "No, no, it'll be fine. It'll be fine. Don't worry. Just do it. It's like tomorrow or something." So yeah, I, I dyed my beard uh, black, and I'm allergic to. Uh, to, to the colouring apparently so my whole face just like swelled up oh and like, literally looked like drop dead Fred you know when he slams his face in the in the in the fridge and um so I had to spend my birthday party I could I had a few drinks because I was on antibiotics <laughs> dressed as Carl Drogo in this costume had made a really fat horrible head um but it was, it was a good night you know everyone everyone <laughs> all my friends played ball which was really good and they all kind of tried to ignore it but it was horrible because it was at the stage as well. This is disgusting, but it was at the stage as well where it was a bit pussy and, and oh. 
<laughs> yeah, yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't great. It wasn't the look. No one was stealing one. your drinks that night, was there? No, no. no one was making your <laughs> well, drinks that night. So maybe I should give up on fancy dress. To be fair, maybe. Uh, yeah, maybe you're right there, Gemma. <laughs> I once, um, me and Charlotte, we went to my mate's mum's fortieth, dressed as Woody and Buzz from Toy okay. Story. Oh, that's nice. And Charlotte went as Buzz and I went as Woody. But I got so drunk, for some reason, I thought it'd be a good idea to do the full Monty oh. to, to his mum. Oh. So I sat, so I sat um, Tory on a chair in the middle of the stage. There's a video of it somewhere, actually. And I did, I did the whole thing dressed as Woody from Toy Story and did the whole full Monty. So, wow. yeah, that, that was another good fancy dress story that went down well. Yeah. <laughs> you all could putting it back on. It was good fun taking it off, but, like, and all the excitement had died down and now I had to find my underpants. It was a bit weird, to be honest. <laughs> we went all the way. Cowboy hat. All the way. Yeah, I had the, yeah, the hat on and yeah, yeah. Was, yeah. Did you have my name wrote on, on the bottom of your shoe? Uh, no, I didn't. I've got it written on my ass instead. All right, fair play. <laughs> <laughs> um, we'll go on to the next one then, because this, this, this one might be the title of the episode because it's, it's, uh, a lot of people love it. I've only seen a couple of episodes of it. So I don't know if I can be the, the greatest judge, but Tiger King, what's she be? Ah. <laughs> I just feel like it was one of those things that, we, that people fussed about so much and got so excited about it. Have you seen it? Have you seen it? And I started it and, and I, I really, we kept going, should we watch any more? Because I'm just really struggling with this. And we did get to the end, but I just feel like it was, it was such a hopeless program and there were no winners and it was horrible and it was basically about animal cruelty yeah. and i just wondered why people were getting so excited about something that was so horrendous and full of terrible ugly human behavior and i suppose i'm curious about what it is about us as a as a as a human race that we love watching horrible people doing horrible things to and 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 i think it sort of tips for me when it's animals yeah. I think I can understand, like, again, the um, don't fuck with cats. I was like, what? Oh, I don't that. know. I think, I think maybe it's, a, you know, the nub of it is animal cruelty. And like, why is everyone getting so excited and so buzzed about something that is so rooted in evil? And I don't, I don't know. It's, it's probably a bit of a thin argument, but I just, I didn't like it. And I didn't get what the fuss was, but mm. I did watch it just to see. I, I suppose I was watching it out of where is the bit that's good? Yeah, you think and it's, it's kind of like a terribly like shocking that happens in it, and everyone's awful, and everyone's using each other, and there's nobody redemptive really. It was almost like a written document. It was like, how can something be that bizarre? Yeah, Do yeah. You know I mean? It was, and kind I felt of like... so sad for some of the people. Like, not that that's patronising and not not helpful, but like, it's just like, why is this? And and why is the documentary maker there at, at that particular point? I found it really. Contrived is too strong, but I was just, uh, this is all a bit too convenient and a bit, um, yeah, it just, it just made me sad and angry. Yeah, I know what you mean with it. But like, also, I think, you know, sometimes good documentaries can sort of not force the movement so much as just make you think, how could I help? Or like, you know, that's so interesting. Or I'm glad that something's been done about it. But like, just it's just a big and hopeless thing at the end. Yeah, because I mean, no. I've, I've only seen it a couple of episodes, but similar to you, really, like everyone was kind of, Oh, you should watch this. You should watch this. And it was because of Shane Meadows. I watched it after we did his episode. He was watching it, and he texted me saying, "Dude, you need to watch it." And I was like, "Ooh, yeah, but yeah. Sorry, yeah." And like quite a lot of really people who I really love and respect, I was like, "Yeah, of course, I'll, I'll watch that." And and as I say, I did, but I just felt felt really empty and horrible after it. Mm. And maybe that's the point. Maybe that's the point of a good documentary as well. Mm, that's but yeah. I found it very. I found it like I don't think this deserves the excitement. I think it should be a quieter thing because it's really horrible yeah i think i think what helped kind of the buzz around that as well was it, it came out pretty much on par with lockdown didn't it so i think everyone was just kind of like we need something to watch as it was well. very much a bandwagon thing wasn't it i think yeah so, yeah you know because social media's got so much kind of more push now because everyone's just constantly Power. kind of on it i think now and like you say literally i remember them first couple of weeks of lockdown I mean, it'd be different for, for me and you, Gemma, because I know for me anyway, it's hard to find a minute to watch anything. But, you know, people were, were just... Bit, uh, Tomo, you've binge-watched quite a few bits, haven't you, with Charles and that? Like, yeah, we've been watching a lot, yeah. 
But yeah, I, I mean, yeah, I'm the same as you, Gemma. Like I say, we watched the first two episodes, me and my wife, and we've not we've not carried on because we were just kind of like, mm-hmm. see where it's entertaining, I guess. But yeah, like it was just a bit, it was a bit bizarre and a bit mad, I guess. And and yeah, because cause, yeah, cause even when you're watching that, is it Carol Baskin who's supposed to be saving and helping the animals? It was kind of like, well, no, you're just kind of making your own zoo. Yeah, I was going to say, wasn't she running her own zoo anyway? Yeah. Pretty much, yeah. But under, under under a different sort of... Pretense, I guess. Pretense, yeah, exactly, I think. It's, yeah, it was one of them bizarre documentaries, but I'm a bit weird, like, when you said about the Don't Fuck With Cats one, um, I, see, I really, obviously, given the circumstances, I really enjoyed that because it's such an... I enjoyed in, that too. It's such an in-depth view into into what what people are thinking and what they're doing, and I, I, I kind of, yeah. I, I like the... I like the documentaries that that dare to go to the places that no one else dares go to to find out why and to find out when and how. Um, they they're my kind of favourite documentaries. Yeah, but, you know, I totally you know, agree with you. And and I think Don't Fuck with Cats was like shocking, but it was still like it was conclusive and I think it was brilliant. But I found Tiger King really inconclusive and mm. and and really just. <clears throat> bullying and, and there's a man in jail that doesn't like deserves to be in jail for certain things sure but like it was just such a horrible manipulation in my opinion of horrible people doing horrible things to each other yeah but yeah I, don't fuck with cats was just such a brilliant mystery wasn't it It really kept you sort of on edge by the sound of moving people love it though isn't it people love people love seeing out of the ordinary things you know if someone made a documentary about all the happy things that happened in the in the world yeah the chances are that wouldn't have the snowball effect and people wouldn't watch that and people wouldn't get behind that like they would necessarily a, a documentary that's about i don't know say say a murderer mm-hmm. or or you know a serial killer or anything like that i, I think yeah. that i think that the documentaries that that include disaster are always the ones that people talk about more do you know yeah. what i mean have you seen Murder on a Sunday Morning? No. Oh, no. Just a brilliant documentary. Uh, I watched it on YouTube in bits. I'm sure no, there's a no. way of finding it. But Murder on a Sunday Morning is brilliant. All oh, right. Okay. What's, what's that one about? Uh, justice in America for a young black man. All oh, right. Okay. And, and the lawyer who takes care of him. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> something special. There's a great there's a great um, film on at the moment called Brian Banks um, on Netflix, which is similar to what you've just been saying. Um, it's about a young NFL um, footballer mm-hmm. in America, and he gets wrongly convicted um, of something. And it's about his lawyer, and it's about him trying to fight, fight his case and get back to um, get back to playing football again. But it's about the struggles of no one believing him, and mm. yeah, it's, it's similar to what you've just been saying. So, somebody who dared to stand up when the accused had a completely hopeless outlook. It's, it's mm. extraordinary. But yeah, it's, yeah. What's, anyway. the, what, what's, the, what's the best documentary? What's a documentary that you've watched and gone, wow, I'm so glad that I watched that? I'd say Murder on a Sunday Morning comes close. Um, what else? I really liked, um, I can't remember the name of it now, uh, the Timothy Tread Treadwell, the Bear Man. What's it called? Oh, I don't know. Oh, fuck. There's a few listeners now. I mean, <laughs> I suggest you've got a few listeners. There's millions of listeners now screaming at <laughs> <in> there. <laughs> <laughs> um, it'll come to me. It'll come to me. No but, question, um, if it comes back to you, yeah. Grizzly Man. <clears throat> Grizzly oh, Man. Right. Okay. Yeah. 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 Grizzly I'm Man. Not, you're on Netflix. It's a Werner Herzog one, and it's oh, I don't know where it is. It's been out for quite a long time. It might be on Netflix, yeah. Yeah, um, I, I yeah. Love documentary, but like you say, yeah, it is. But like, like again, I've I've not watched the the whole entirety of, of Tiger King. But if it hasn't kind of got a conclusion, and you're kind of just looking at these mad people, it kind of just sounds a bit like Netflix's sort of strange version of Towie or something. Really, it's really voyeuristic, and I think a good documentary kind of lays things out for you to maybe make your own decision about things i, d- I don't know it just didn't it, it didn't hit for me but i don't know fair play fair play yeah no i'm the same it, it wasn't it, it wasn't one of them that when it got to the end of an episode i wasn't like i need to watch the next one yeah 
Yeah, see, I'm, I'm like that now with The Last Dance on Netflix. Yeah, you are. And I, yeah, I, <laughs> <laughs> I haven't seen that. We're watching normal people. I mean, I'm... Oh, that is amazing. I mm. Chicago Bulls, and that Last Dance is just, it's just, yeah, it's my, it was made for me, I think. Is that about Michael Jordan, right? So it's about Michael Jordan and the, the sort of Chicago Bulls team from sort of 91 to 98, when they were just unstoppable. And that was oh, like yeah. the time I was sort of, I just I discovered them and got into them and kind mm-hmm. of, um, so yeah it's really good but yeah normal people have heard a lot about that I've heard a lot that I've heard so that. good those two they're incredible I can't believe it they're that incredible. is probably the most magnetic performance I think I've I've seen in a long time you yeah. just you just can't stop watching them can you I, I I'm nervous and I'm emotional watching awkward. it and I'm and it's awkward yeah it's I'm just like. Yeah, and we're only about halfway through, but um, it's just extraordinary, and they're brilliant. So, mm-hmm. yeah. yeah. Uh, next I'm on that bandwagon. Anyway, <laughs> next one you're saying, sorry. Um, <laughs> I'm guessing this is probably sort of similar reasons, um, but like boxing. Is that is, is it is it the television? See, I read that one, and I was I, I disagree. I knew you'd have a problem with this, Tom. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I did. Yeah. This is why me and Tomo kind of work so well because I'm so like yeah I'm I'm probably more with you on this Gemma I guess and then yeah go on why is boxing overrated go on <laughs> okay maybe maybe it's overrated my feeling is what is the point like you are really hurting each other you're going to be brain damaged why what is so interesting about watching two people hit the crap out of each other till one of them falls on the floor and can no longer see or function yeah. i don't understand yeah that is my view and i've never understood it. and every time I, if i flick through the tv and i see a punch or something i wince i get so upset and i think about their poor mothers oh yeah so mum. why is it good but the, but the technicalities that goes into into boxing like it's I, I know it's that I know and not dissing any um, UFC or MMA fighters because I know there's a lot going into that as well. Yeah, but I think well, that's exactly, yeah. I think that's more of a brawl. I think with boxing, it's kind of like you've really, really got to use your head. You know, you can't if you go in throwing punches as a punch bag. So yeah, as a punch bag, yeah. <laughs> but if you just go in windmilling, throwing around, if you're up against a good boxer, he'll know what to do technically to get around that. And I get, I think that just. And I think the hard work that goes into into what they do, I, I think it's phenomenal. Like I, I'm friends with a few boxers, and um, yeah, I just think that the 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 shit that their bodies go through to get to where they need to be as well is like it's just incredible. But I, yeah, yeah. I've always I totally been... understand that side of things. I think it's incredible mm. what they do, and that they know exactly where to hit someone that will cause maximum impact, <laughs> and like a one punch can sometimes cause a knockout. Like that is technically incredible but why why not yeah why yeah, i know i know what you're saying I, but i guess it's like for for other people's entertainment in a way i guess if you don't follow football people will go well it's just it's just a bunch of men kicking a bag of air around isn't it well it is well, isn't it well it's not though it's not <laughs> it's so much more than that i agree with you on that i do love football i'm not a massive follower or fan or anything but when the world cup and the european cup come on i really love oh, watching it yeah, and you can see the skill. i completely agree but i don't follow it you know sort of the the league so so, so to speak and but i get can... the skill but they're not hurting each other yeah no no well, sometimes you, you think never like getting hurt the way they roll around <laughs> say that again andy sorry yeah I'm clearly never watched wayne rooney play when he first joined united he's just yeah just so yeah a few people might have got hurt but it's not it's not just men kicking a football around, Andy. If you can score a forty yard free kick in the pissing rain on a Tuesday night in Stoke. I can't, but can uh, <laughs> you know can 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 Wayne Rooney play gadget? I don't know. Can he? Could he? Probably better than me. You know, I don't know. I reckon it yeah, I reckon he'd give it a good stab. He'd be all right. Um I, yeah, I get what you mean though, Gemma, with boxing, because I mean I have kind of I, I'm not a big sports fan at all. Um I I, I like basketball. I don't watch it often because it's on too late, but but I don't really watch football. But I like the atmosphere. So football, same as you, like the World Cup. Yeah. And, stuff like and when it's a little bit easier to follow, it's like, okay, well, England won this game. So that means that it's easier and it just makes sense. Um, and it's more the atmosphere. And I think probably the same with boxing. Like I, I, I wouldn't turn it on and watch it, but there has been times, I guess, when like there's been a big fight on and there's an atmosphere built around that. Obviously, yeah. Being from Manchester, I remember when uh, Ricky Hatton used to fight a lot and, and that would be a big deal in Manchester, like 
pubs would like stay open throughout the night if he was fighting in like Vegas and, and, and the fight would be on at four in the morning. So you'd be in the pub from say eight at night till eight in the morning. And the atmosphere was really good. So Quite a uniting I, I, thing. Quite, yeah, I guess yeah. so. Yeah, yeah. Cause, cause the atmosphere, like, when you've got, but when there's a boxing match on, I think the atmosphere is very, uh, yeah, particularly in pubs and bars, like in sports bars and things. The yeah, atmosphere is brilliant. I guess it's like the one last, well, not last anymore, because you have got things like USC and stuff, but, you know, I, I think human beings are just horrible creatures. And, and if you look at the past, you know, you look at kind of, you know, the Roman Empire and even now, like, Spain with, with, with uh, bullfighting and stuff like that, like, we love a blood sport, I guess. We yeah, love, yeah, you know, it's like, yeah, like, people used to go to public hangings and stuff, like, to just see, like, horrendous things happen to people. Yeah. I it's, just, uh I think it's human nature, weirdly, isn't it? It's like if you drive past an accident on the motorway, you can Yeah, you slow down. You have to do that, don't you? In, in, a, in a weird way, you don't want to, but... Yeah, it's, yeah, it's, yeah. I think, it, yeah. <clears throat> I used to, I was just, I'm just thinking back though, I used to, my, my brother and I, we used to watch the, the wrestling on Saturday afternoons when we were younger. But like well, something, um, something about that seemed really harmless, like really pantomime and fun. Well, I mean, it is, isn't it? Yeah, I, yeah. Mean, yeah. I, so I did used to watch that before I understood that it was pretend. Oh, right, okay. So, so I suppose even that was like, whoa, yeah, yeah. I suppose, yeah, yeah just something about boxing just like, the fact that people are so damaged by it. When it really got me, because obviously Andrew Shim, who, who uh, plays Milky, and this is England, uh, a friend of mine and Tom O's, um, he, he was for a little while uh, a UFC fighter, wanted he to? Mm. UFC, yeah, like mixed martial arts and stuff. And I don't know if you came, Tom, but he had a fight in like Stoke. And no. a few of us went and watched him. And like, obviously before I'm like, oh yeah, we're going to go and watch Shimmy, like have a, a fight and stuff like that. And you don't really realise until you're there that, you know, you're going to watch your mate have a fight with a really, really hard bloke. And it was exactly what you said, like every punch that was thrown that connected with Shim was just horrible to watch. Mm. Because, you know, I mean, they all are anyway, but because then we knew him as well, it was just like, Oh, like Don't it. hit my friend! Yeah, well, yeah, you know, it was just really... Sorry, I need to move the lights right in my head. I was going to say, it was a really like good idea a, then. Baseball. Yeah, it's like a west-facing window there, I guess. So we get really, really nice golden hour sunsets. It's like, it's like being in LA, but it's not. I'm in a council estate in Manchester. The one thing that I, I don't like about boxing is if you go and watch it in a, in a, in a, in a bar, everyone becomes a boxing professional. Everyone, everyone's right. like, oh no, we'll do him in the eighth and they'll do this and no, you won't see this because Eddie ends this and, and then everyone becomes a professional like pundit. And it's like, yeah, I don't know. And the, the, like the passion that people have got, but I guess it's like for any sport, yeah, people, people, people get really passionate. People is there get, any yeah, yeah, people get excited, don't they? And is there any sports that you're passionate about, Gemma? Sports that I'm passionate about, um. Was you passionate during the World Cup? Yeah, I was really passionate during the World Cup. And I remember that England game when we kind of got, it was when we, were going, we could or couldn't have got through to the semis, I think. Was it Iceland? I can't remember. Um, yeah, and it, yeah, we played Iceland, didn't we? I can't remember what it was. But we were on, it was penalties. And we were on set on Gentleman Jack and everything stopped. And we all got on the production truck. And somehow some beers appeared. <laughs> because we were waiting for some light or something in the evening that wasn't right or it was raining or they weren't, didn't have the right thing so everything had to stop so we could watch it and I got really excited about that I got really excited and then excited going back to work after that what was like no it know. wasn't like, we weren't used it was one of those where you're like we're hoping to use you but you might not get used because it's raining and then it was like it was so late in the evening that they sent us home so we got to watch the match nice. um, and that I was really passionate about that and really squealy and excited and also like I became an expert about penalties Tom yeah, <laughs> everyone really briefly, briefly, he's going to put it in the corner. He's going to get this one. I've got one of my feelings, you know. <laughs> <laughs> I think yeah. everyone does it. Everyone gets yeah. passionate about it, particularly but, um, about the World Cup. Passionate about sport. I, I really love swimming. I wouldn't swimming. call it passionate though, but I'm really missing swimming. Um, I'm certainly not passionate about running, but that's the only thing we can do at the moment. Um, so yeah, but yeah, you, you, sports that unite, and I think. Football is the one. And I, I really do love rugby because my dad used to love rugby. So I like to watch England-Ireland games and stuff like that when the Six Nations happen, just as a little tribute to him. 
Oh, nice. so, I like I like the fans that can mix. When I went I went to a boxing match at Wembley, I went to see Carl Frotch versus George Groves. Um and it was nice that you've got a a bunch of fifteen lads who was following George Groves, and then you've got a bunch of ten lads who was following Carl Frotch, and they're all together, and they, and they we was all drinking together, and everyone sort of yeah. like having a good time, and it wasn't like um like the ridiculous football fans, obviously not all of them, but some of them, you know, they they just go to a, a, a sporting event just because they want to have a fight, they're hooligans, yeah. and it's like I, I I don't agree with that, but what what I do think was amazing is the same with rugby I imagine uh, I've never been to a rugby game but the fans mix together and everyone just yeah. has a good time and together but different yeah different mm. opinions but together in it yeah 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 that's one thing I do I do like about the boxing is that the, the fans are sort of together yeah yeah, yeah. so the bit, the, the bit I do like is the way in and the facing up because they yeah. don't hurt each other, yeah. but it's so dramatic and theatrical. I do like that bit. Yeah. Sometimes I think they're all fake. I think a yeah. lot of them, are, like the build up and things, are all fake. And I think the UFC is the worst one for it. They well, they're build ups. I was just going to say that um, I only seen the clip the other day, but I think it was obviously before, just before the lockdown and stuff. Did you see that? It was the women's UFC, and there was two women fighters. I think one was from like. I want to say Serbia or somewhere in that neck of the woods. And the other lady was from China. And the woman from Serbia was like being really horrible about the whole coronavirus thing and, and, and whatnot, obviously originating in China. Um, and then like in the fight, the, the, the lady from China absolutely obliterated the other woman to the fact where her face looked like it had been rearranged. Like, oh, no. um, and and that was all, like I say, that was all from sort of the way in, like the, the video that I'd seen was saying like, you know, like this is why you shouldn't be, you know, a horrible racist person basically because you'll get your face rearranged by the person you call it. Do you know what I mean? Like, well, Yeah, it happened a lot with, um, did, did you, it's, oh yes, you wouldn't have watched um, the boxing match between Conor McGregor then, Gemma, no? Conor no. McGregor and um, uh, uh, Floyd Mayweather. You didn't watch that? See, that was a great sporting event. But wasn't it only for like a three rounds or something? It didn't go that long, did it? No, it went to eight rounds. Well, did it? Eight. Yeah. Oh, wow. okay. Fair play. Yeah. See, that's... How long did the round last? Uh, three minute rounds. So you have 12, 12 three minute rounds. So you could be fighting for, for what, 36 minutes? So if you think about 36, is it 36? What's three? I can't do maths. It's not. Um, 12, not. 12, 36, Lots yeah. Of Lots of minutes. Yeah. If you think you've got to be like at the top of your game to be able to, to, to endure the the pace of that they're that they're fighting, like I think it's like for the fitness levels, I think it's incredible. Yeah, yeah. I just try and run away from him for the three minutes, <laughs> and then at the end, just take a little punch. Well, the way that you're running at the minute, you'll be all right. You'll be able to get away from him. Be well in there. You'll be a pro. And if for any reason you have a fight in a swimming pool, they've got no chance. <laughs> no chance. <laughs> Dunk him. <laughs> How much <laughs> swim? <clears throat> Do you hey? swim a lot? Do you swim a lot? When, when the swimming pools are open, yeah, yeah. Yeah? As much as I can, yeah. Yeah, I love it. I really love it. It's great exercise swimming as well. Yeah. It? Mm. And it does everything, doesn't it? And, it does and you have to be cool. away from your phone. And yeah. you have to just, you know. Zone out. Good. How long do you swim for at a time? Because I get half, bored. Half an hour. Yeah, I agree with you. It does get a bit boring. But like, what I find really nice is like, I've got lines to learn. And I'm sort of nearly there. I'll say, I'll sort of put, do them in my head while I'm swimming and stuff. I find that quite therapeutic, quite rhythmic and meditative. So you can switch off and just float mm. around. And I quite like, I, like, I quite like going to a pool and just floating around. Just you're sort one of, of them. Yeah. One of them, the, the, the side danglers. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of them. Yeah, just basically the gym that I go to, there's a pool. It's quite small, but I just kind of, I just like being in the pool. Yeah, you always like, feel good about even if you've just sort of got in and got out again. You feel like you need a snack, don't you? It's something yeah. about getting into a pool. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. <laughs> I do like being in the pool. Um, we'll quickly go through um, s some of the others then, Gemma, because mm. obviously one of them here is is a big one for me. Not quite the minute. Um, potty training. Yeah, and I'm sure this is very niche, so we'll go over it quickly. Well, I mean, a lot of people have kids. So. You're right, you're right, you're right. But also, you know, I don't want to be like, I'm, I'm the only person who's got a kid in the world. But I find <laughs> that during this lockdown, we've gone for it. We've tried to potty train her. And she's done really well. But there are so many accidents and yeah. so many 
battles and wrangles and stuff. And, and, and also like now that she's sort of potty trained, if we're in bed and we're just still coming around and she needs a wee, we've got to get up and go with her and help her. Whereas if she had a nappy, I'd just, just do it in your nappy. Yeah, yeah. E- even now, I don't want to do it in my nappy. I want to go to the toilet. So why, do, why, why don't we just all stay in nappies? Because one of the highlights of my post, postpartum was wearing adult nappies. I could just do wee-wees, didn't have to get to the toilet. I just think it's a lovely idea that maybe we made a mistake training ourselves to use the toilets and we should all be in nappies. I like that. Particularly if you're at the football and you need to queue to get a, go for exactly. a wee-wee. At the theatre, there's never enough toilets for women. Just do it in your nappy. Yeah. Just but but, but my, my genuine stuff. point is that just like the idea of her being potty trained, if I said, oh, when she's potty trained, it'd be wonderful. It'd be so free. It's like, it's just so tying. Because like, mummy, I need a wee-wee. We've got to go somewhere and make that happen rather than just yeah. like, we'll just stay in the park. Cause, but we just let a wee in the park, actually. Yeah. But. <laughs> <laughs> that, you just reminded me like how, because when, when you say potty training there, like I was in my head, obviously with my eldest, it was like, no, it was actually quite easy, I think. And I think- it's a girl. Yeah, it's a little girl, yeah. I think it was, the transition was easier from nappies to toilet. But yeah, now you've just said it, like that was just such a, like, just such a hard time. Like when you should be playing, I need a wee and it's like, now I've got to go upstairs. Yeah, get the potty or go, try and put you on the toilet. And then you get there and you're like, mm, I'm only joking. It's like, what? <laughs> <laughs> what, I got out of bed? It's for me to not want kids anymore. I'm fine. Yeah. I don't want to do it. I think, I think there's been a few podcasts recently but children have been mentioned, you'd be like, that's enough to put me off. Yeah. Yeah. yeah no, you keep you safe. Gonna, you're never going to do it. <laughs> <laughs> um, well, go, go, going on from that then with, with your nappy on um, your next one's getting dressed so is, is that including- I mean, who does like getting dressed I mean come it's, on it's just, it's just occurred to me in lockdown that like it's quite nice just to not get dressed isn't it sometimes I totally agree I'm not wearing any pants like just now I've, I've been for a run and had a shower and I was like well I'll get my pyjamas oh no I've got to look like I've got something on for the, for the lads so <laughs> something on for the lads yeah, yeah. Than, yeah. So I, put, I put my jumper on. I've got my pajamas on the bottom. Put, put my jumper on, but just it's nice to be in pajamas. That's it's just occurred to me during lockdown that actually mm. uh, maybe it goes back to Mufti days and Wurzel Gummidge and like making choices. It's just like yeah. Well, I mean, I, with, I with your job, Gemma. I mean, I people well would have seen it on on my social media and things. When I'm working, if I'm filming, I don't get dressed to go to work in the morning. I wear a onesie. So I'll get out of bed in the morning. Oh, this is brilliant. I and I put a onesie on and I get in the car and I go to work and take my onesie off, get into my costume because I'm not, there's no point in me putting a pair of jeans on or getting dressed to go to work to get out of it again. Going out into the world, there's a point. <laughs> well, I'm only sitting in a car and then I'm going to work and then I'm getting changed. I don't see the point in getting dressed for, for, to yeah. get undressed again. Yeah, I get I what totally you agree. mean. I've kind of like, because uh, I, I sort of, when I was a kid, I used to wear kind of tracksuit bottoms a lot and stuff like that. Never really wore jeans and that. And then I got a bit older and started wearing jeans and, and, and stuff like that. But now, I think since having kids and that, like, again, I've just kind of slid back to, I think I've got one pair of jeans, maybe two that I go out I've with. got one, yeah. But then anything else... You're all going to get covered in crap, isn't it? Exactly. There's no point. Everything I else. genuinely have those, I guess. So, I, I, yeah, I get, I get what you mean. Like, I, 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 I'm not, yeah... I don't like to be naked, but I quite like just being... I love being naked. It's great. It's the, great. It's the only time I'm happy. <laughs> it is lovely to be naked. Yeah. It's when I'm it's truly lovely. happy. But only in your own home. Well, yeah. yeah. We, shouldn't, we shouldn't be telling... Depends how much you've had to drink. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> I, uh, or if you're at your uh, mother-in-law's 40th or whatever you were saying. <laughs> exactly, yeah. yeah. That's why you like being naked. I genuinely... I haven't worn a pair of jeans. I, I remember the last time I went out, it was on, I don't know, February the 22nd, I think it was. I haven't put a pair of jeans on my body since February. Same. And we're in May. And that yeah. makes, nothing makes me happier than that. I Elasticated things. Hmm, I don't think they'd fit me anymore. I don't want to even try. <laughs> <laughs> I put a shirt and a pair of jeans on on Saturday night, just gone, just to feel like it was Saturday well, night. Well, well, date night. No, not even that. Like my I wife, know, mate, you've got two kids. <laughs> Yeah, my wife came home from work and was like, what are you doing? And I was like, well, it's Saturday night. I just kind of wanted to put, you know, a T-shirt on and, I mean, a shirt on and some jeans. Like, it's what I feel like it's kind of Saturday night. Yeah, but and then within five minutes, you quickly remember that it's not Saturday. And then 
Wait, now what? you look like a tip it's full of in the front room. Where it's Saturday, but it's Tuesday. Yeah. yeah. Days don't even it, where does your wife work? She, she, she yeah. has to go out. She works at uh, Manchester Children's Hospital. She's a she's a Oh, mayor. wow. So, yeah. So how's, she, she, how's she getting on? Yeah, yeah, she's getting on fine. She has to wear all the kind of, uh, she just wear masks and stuff. And then if anything sort of happens with the kids, they have to put the PPE on um, and whatnot. But yeah, I was kind of nervous at first with it all uh, yeah. for her and, 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 and obviously and, and stuff. But um, in a weird way, she, she's kind of kept away from it all because her, the ward that she works on anyway is like really poorly kids anyway. So if anything... Oh, wow, what a woman. Oh, into that ward anyway it'd be quite bad so they have to be very very on it yeah. so like the parents pretty much live on the ward now with the kids they can't yeah. leave and yeah i mean it's it's hard but god um, what an amazing job what yeah, a woman that's incredible yeah yeah she is she's she's a superhero <laughs> yeah don't, don't let her hear that though because uh you know it'll go through her head and it's be able to do that i think she must be but yeah yeah no she is she is is Charlotte staying at home, Tom? Is she, is she able to stay at home? Charlotte's a nursery nurse, so she's she's manager. So they're they're planning on opening the nursery pretty soon. So she's sort of working hard now to. Put Are all they the going for the first of June, sort of thing? Uh, I think so. Yeah, June time. Um, but obviously now she's working hard on putting the measures in place about what we're going to do and brilliant things like that. So it's kind of getting a, a little bit more stressful for her now. But yeah, she's. Um, I mean, she yeah, she she works she works ridiculously hard. Both your both your wives work with children. It's very really nice. Mm. Yeah, and then we just play dress up all day. That's yeah, all we, we just do. dress up in our onesies. <laughs> and our onesies. You get food and water brought to us. Yeah. <laughs> and five people making coffee one day. That's I've only got two. I've only got two. One day. <laughs> your your other half is it your husband Gemma? He, yeah, he works as well, does he? So he, he works for the NHS in uh, the wow, multi. Look at all of our husbands health. and wives yeah. being great. Yeah, he works in, in the mental health sector, so he works oh, a couple nice. of days a week for the NHS. Amazing, amazing. Yeah, that's, that's a big part of all this as well, I guess. That you know the, the side effects of of people's mental health and yeah, he's been really busy. I can imagine, man. I can imagine. Mm. Oh, well done, well done. Yeah. Um, so. Just so we can prance around in our uh, costumes. <laughs> we can ride horses and look cool and all that stuff. Um, last one. This is going to get a lot of people's goats, I think. Because um, I, I quite like it. I quite yeah, I know it. a lot of people like it. Um, karaoke. The, the beautiful Japanese art form that's transcended over the sea to us. Like, what? That's origami, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's origami and calligraphy. <laughs> never, you should never be pissed up folding paper in a, in a pub at three o'clock in the morning. <laughs> no, because if, if a bouncer sees you, you'll get kicked out. Yeah. <laughs> think it could be exactly. anything. If a yeah. bouncer sees you trying to make a little paper crane, you're out. <laughs> it's just a lily pad, honestly. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, 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 I disagree again. I think karaoke is amazing. But go on, Gemma, you tell us why you... Go on. Ruin go on. Go on, then. Go on, then. Ruin it for everyone. You ruined <laughs> boxing. <laughs> Um, I think it's only fun for the person with the microphone and the person with the microphone never sounds good. That's a great point. And it's just wholly unsatisfying. <laughs> it's just crap. It's just a completely I, crap thing to do. Have you ever get I, up? Have you ever got up? I think I did it once in Cyprus. I was about 11 and I sang like a virgin oh, wow. by Madonna. And I thought I was awesome. I had these like white patent wedgies on and these tiny little white denim shorts and little green vests. And I was like, I made it through. No one needs to hear that. But um, I thought I was the, the dogs. And it was awful. But it was fun for me. But no one needs to see that. Mm. And I know, I've never done karaoke again. I just, don't, I just don't think it's... I've never heard it described as it's only fun for the person singing. And when you think about it, that's so true. Yeah. Although sometimes... You I... love it when you've got the mic, don't you? But when the, someone else has got the mic... You want to be the backing singer, don't you? Yeah. Mm. Let's do a duet, you know, you want to be part of it. Sometimes, and, and very rarely, you do get someone really good. And it you takes the fun that, out of it, that. They've gone there for that reason as well. So yeah. that kind of taints it. It's like, right, taints it, doesn't it? It's like, yeah, I've got my song. I know what I'm singing. <laughs> and I'm going to be probably number three or four because people will still be listening and not too drunk. And I'm going to go for it. <laughs> plan the night yeah. out. Yeah, plan it. Plan it around that. Around eight o'clock, I should be on that stage. <laughs> Maybe it's like a, it's a gig for someone. Yeah, exactly. I'm, I might gig. get spotted. Do you think anyone goes to karaoke to get spotted? 
Mm. Or I don't think since X Factor. I wonder if anyone's ever been spotted during a cat look. What did you say, And? I said, I said, I don't think since X Factor. I think, think no. <laughs> I wonder if anyone's ever done karaoke and there's been someone there and gone, do you know what? You've got it, mate. You're, you're, you're the next big thing. I reckon it's possible. I reckon yeah. it's possible. I love karaoke, but you'd only ever get me up there when I'm, I'm pissed. I'd never do it sober. In a million and years. Like, suddenly you'd be naked by the sound of things. It would, it would only be fun for you. I went on it. That's who it was. My mate's mum seemed to enjoy it, so... <laughs> <laughs> he looked happy. <laughs> just really like. I have to get a little clip of the video now to put it on the overrated everything no. Instagram as a teaser. <laughs> teaser for the podcast, not for the for the ladies out there. <laughs> no, like I say, I, I, I do quite like karaoke, but yeah, I get what you mean because it is it is only really fun for the person doing it, I guess. And it, I've, like I say, I've never really never really heard that. But have you ever have you ever been to like the there's a few in Manchester. I'm sure they're a, they're, a, they're a thing anyway. Like karaoke booths, Chinese karaoke booths. No. So there, yeah, that that's a strange thing. We did it on a. I used to uh, work in, in an office, and we did it for like one of the, the lads' sort of stag dues. And you sort of hire out this like little room. I mean, you know, probably the size of I don't know a, a living room. Depends how big your living room is. That's a shit analogy, but it's not big, not small. Um, and it's just got, <laughs> <laughs> can't explain it. I'm just trying to think of how big my living room is now. Thinking, could I get a karaoke booth in here? So it's got like a big screen, and then you obviously get a mic, and then you can just choose what songs you want. And you so it's karaoke it. then? No, but, no, but it's not like you're in a club with loads of other people. It's just like <laughs> your own little room with you and your friends. Yeah. Big screen, and you just pick what songs you want, and you guys just sing and have have fun. But yeah, I think yeah, like when I went there, that quickly became you know, the most kind of attention-seeking person's night. Yeah. Oh, I I really what is it? it is an attention thing, isn't it? I think yeah. it is an attention thing. Yeah, I guess so. I guess so. I guess so. And then you mix it with drink and everyone's like, exactly like you said, everyone's a, everyone's a boxing pro. Um, when you mix it with drink, everyone can sing amazing, can't they, I guess? Yeah. Well, In their heard, own heads. Yeah. You've heard yeah. me singing karaoke, Andy, and it's not pretty. <laughs> It's it was it was all right, mate. You're not too bad. You know, I I can't sing. I think we said this on uh, someone uh, someone else on the podcast mentioned karaoke. I think, and um, I I owe my I think I owe my kind of acting career to karaoke. So I've got a little love love spot. Do you? In a way, because I remember being sort of seven, eight ish, and um, the again going back to Chicago Bulls, the the Space Jam film. And I really loved the film with Michael Jordan. I really loved it. And the song in that was, uh, I believe, I Can Fly by R. Kelly. Mm -hmm. So I just loved that song. I remember going on holiday one year and it was the first time I'd ever really discovered karaoke. And I, I sang, I believe, I Can Fly. And then literally, I was like I say, I was like this little kid. So obviously everyone in the club was like, ah. And then instantly from that minute, it was like, oh, this is, I quite like this. You know, kind of performing and kind of, so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, and then I wanted to be a singer then, and then I kind of got to 11, 12, and my voice broke, and my I can't sing broke. anymore, can't hold a tune. Um, and then I was kind of like pushed into like, dra not pushed into drama, but like teachers in school were going, well, you're really like loud and cheeky and that. Why don't you do drama? Yeah. Uh, yeah, so in a way, I can't, I've got... It, it woke something up in you. I think so. <laughs> Without sounding like a wanky actor. <laughs> So, so, so it's karaoke's fault that you're on the telly. Yeah, blame karaoke. Blame, blame karaoke. <laughs> <laughs> I think that's a good place to wrap it up, mate, isn't it? I reckon so, Gemma. Oh, oh go on. Oh, go on. No, no, no. I'm just... I, I, was, you know. I was just saying thank you to, to Gemma for, for, for coming. Yeah. Fa you know. It's finally. so, so nice to hang out with you. I, I could hang out all the time with you of an evening. It's just nice to speak to other humans, isn't it? Yeah, it's nice, yeah. isn't it, to see other people's faces? Yeah, because again, well, you know, I, was, I was quite excited about this when, when, when I, you know, obviously I'd forgotten it's our wedding anniversary, but like, I was yeah, like, I'm I not can't believe you're letting us I'm do not this. Moving it, I'm not cancelling it. I'm speaking to some different people tonight, and I've been waiting for ages for it. I know. I can I kind of feel a bit bad now that you. We forgot. We both forgot. How long? It, been, how, Facebook reminded us. How long have you been married? Three years. Oh, okay. Oh, yeah. Wow. Apparently, it's leather. Third year is leather. Yeah. Ooh, yeah, you've not got anything. So, what are you thinking of getting him? Um, He'll know by the time this comes out. Don't worry. Nothing, nothing. I've got nothing. I could give him one of my shoes. 
it's leather, isn't it? But <laughs> like a magpie, find something. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, I'm on my third one this year. So yeah, leather, I'm kind of, what do you buy? That's leather. Yeah. What did you why? What's what's the rules to this? What's going on? Just quick before let's so like, not you for first, any your anniversary, first year anniversary is paper, so you give your spouse like something made of paper. Second year is cotton. You give them something made of cotton. Third year, and then it all it goes all the way up to like, I don't know, ruby and emerald and whatever when you're like it's fifteen, sixty years married and stuff. So know every what? year's got a little like theme. Then year three of marriage is leather. Leather. Have you never never heard of that tea? No. And I, you know what? I didn't even get Charlotte a card for our first anniversary. So you fucked up on the paper then? Yeah. I mean, massively. <laughs> but we first went, one's I, easy. I took, her to, I took her to New York um, for our Oh, all right. But, but on the morning of, she came into my room and she put a card on the bedside table and said, happy anniversary. I was like, oh, shit. And I said, I haven't got you one. I said, I brought you to New York. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I was a terrible husband from day one I'm afraid maybe I might not, not I might not need to buy any leather I might not make it there yeah you might <laughs> not be able to get that gimp mask <laughs> <laughs> that's where we end it <laughs> Gemma thank you very much mate um uh yeah thank you very much hopefully we'll we'll get to actually meet in real life one day I'd love it. that I'd love that yeah it'll be in great good time. that'd be brilliant for, yeah did you say your drink of choice is uh rum I do I love a rum and coke yeah spiced that's rum good. or normal Either, either, any rum. Not white, not Bacardi though. It's got to be dark rum. Have you tried that? Is it Kraken? Yeah, I have. It gave me an awful headache, but it oh, might really? be because I was quite dehydrated. I used, I used it to quench my thirst, which is probably a... Yeah, that's not mistake. a good idea, that. <laughs> Kraken and Coca-Cola. <laughs> Kraken, want, Kraken yeah. is lovely. Yeah, yeah, you're absolutely right. It's uh, got a good, good percentage on it. <laughs> yeah. You go and enjoy your night, mate. Thank you very much for joining oh, Thank us. you so much both. I, I don't want to leave you, but... Um, Oh. That's, that's the, the, a desperate woman in, in, uh, in and also because you're lovely people. Oh, thanks. I'll stop talking. I'm going. Happy anniversary. So nice to hang out. Thank you so much for having me. Take care. Bye bye. Take care. Bye. Bye bye. Um, again, lots to talk about, lots to yeah. debrief. <laughs> yeah, she's great, isn't she? Yeah, brilliant, man, brilliant. And um, I love that, um, again, uh, I was going to say this at the top, but like she came with a long list, and I, I like that, especially when it's someone that we don't know, because neither you or me know Gemma. Never, I've never met her, Not I don't think. Well, no, yeah. Um, but... Because normally when, when people that we don't know bring a long list, I'm like, oh, brilliant, because at least there won't be any awkwardness. But I don't think there would have been any awkwardness there anyway. Like, she was just... It was like a mate, wasn't it, instantly? She was yeah, just like, she's so, like, normal and down to earth. Um, but, I mean, she, at one point, probably one of the biggest biggest stars in the world. I mean... Yeah, yeah, Game with Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones, Game of Thrones is obviously... But it's, like, it must be showed in every corner of the world. So, yeah, yeah it's nice to see that people have... Um, people have you know, um, Gemma's position, having done so well, um, to know that she's still so down to earth. Um, she doesn't look like karaoke. <laughs> she doesn't like karaoke. How do you not like karaoke, man? I mean, I get it. I get a point. It's a bit hit and miss. I think karaoke. I've got to be. I've got to be steaming to do it. Yeah, and like she said, um, you're the only one enjoying it. Yeah, it's a good point that. It was a good point, I think. That's like, a very, you never stop to think about that. You're the only one that's really enjoying it, yeah. Although yeah. I do enjoy when you're on holiday and you get people. Like, knowing you say if you're in an all, all-inclusive um, and there's a karaoke night, I do, I do enjoy that. Love yeah. it. I'm a big fan of karaoke. Yeah, it is, isn't it? It's nice. Like, it's just a bit different, isn't it? Because, like, you know, it is, a, it, is, it is very much a holiday thing. But then mm. we used to have karaoke nights in, in, in one of my locals and it was a great night. Do you know what I mean? Mm. You'd have the same, like, you'd have the old bloke who got up and sang, uh, oh, what's the song? You know, I know when I hold them, know when I fold them. <laughs> like, do you know what I mean? Is that to, you? That, no, no. <laughs> um, me, and, me and Jordan used to get up and sing, uh, all night long. Mm. Um, but yeah, I mean, that's you a know. lovely image that you and Jordan doing that. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, again, you know, lots, 
you know, getting getting dressed obviously is what we went on. Uh, like we said before, we're, we're both not fans of that. Potty training, we chatted a little bit about that. Like, obviously, Gemma's got a little learn and, and and I, you know, talk about just potty training is something I I just forgot really until Gemma mentioned. Like, it was that's it was why like, you still wet the bed, Andy. <laughs> yeah. This is what we've talked about. I know, I need to stop. Um, <laughs> and obviously a big one, um, Tiger King, which um, it sort of fizzled out now, but sort of yeah. way, way many, many years ago in March, um, it was like there's just you couldn't move without seeing a Carol Baskin post on, oh, on that Facebook. Oh, man. God, and and I've not watched it all yet. Have you watched it all? Of Tiger? Yeah, I finished Have it. Yeah. I've yeah. still, I kind of give up on it halfway through, and I'm glad I did after listening to... Gemma's points on like animal welfare and, and things like that. Mm. Kind of glad I didn't follow it through, to be honest. Yeah. And I'm probably yeah. not going to bother now. Fuck no, Carol Baskin. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no, but um, yeah, another good week, mate. Um, Who should we do next week, T? We've not, we didn't even discuss this in our little. We've got a few. We can maybe hint at some. So, who've we got in the bag? We like we can lay him on the table. I think we can lay him on the table and tease. I think we do. Him. I think we do. Irvine Welsh. Irvine Welsh, the um, amazing uh, writer whose uh, books have been adapted to some of the greatest British films in cinema history. That oh, Irvine, like, like Train Spotting, like Train Spotting, and um, what's the one you're com- in coming up? In? Creation Stories. Creation the Alan Stories. <laughs> yeah, I think we go. I think we go. Um, I think we go Irvine Welsh. Yeah, and um, yeah, definitely. I think I think we definitely another should. week that you really enjoyed. Mate, he was talking about politics. And, and again, um, very, 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 very relevant at the minute. Mm-hmm. Will be very it relevant. Was right up your it was kind of a week where I just sat there like, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Again, yeah. 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 I mean, we both did a bit. He, he, he yeah. very much um, took the podcast and ran with it, which I love when guests do that. Yeah. That's, they're on here to, to vent. And uh, boy, will he vent next week. But um, oh that's next week anyway. We'll talk more about that then. Yeah. Um, but yeah, Gemma, um, amazing. Uh, obviously, it was great to get her. And hopefully one day we'll, we'll actually get to meet her and maybe, yeah. you know, have a I cheeky like drink and, and, and maybe, yeah, even work together or whatever. Um, yeah, uh, as always... You do this bit, Tomo, because I do yeah. it all the time. The, the As whole... always, <laughs> you know, oh, sorry, mate, I just jumped in a bit. No, no, go, do it, do it. Um, as always, you know that we um, that we do have a Patreon, which is www.patreon.com forward slash overrated everything. Dead easy um, to remember. Dead easy to remember. Uh, all of the proceeds at the moment that we are raising um, are going um, to local charities. Uh, we haven't yet come to a decision yet where we're going to do that. Um, yeah. Obviously, you know, for for obvious reasons at the minute, you know, the NHS will be at the forefront of our mind. Um, but also, as we say most weeks, um, there is a lot of charities out there that, you know, are, are, are sort of being put on the back burner a little bit, if you like, because of everything that's going on, which is very understandable. But what we try to do is remember the the, the hard work that goes into charities like, you know, for instance, Once Upon a Smile is a charity I work closely with. They work all year round. Um you know and, and they work tirelessly so you know there's lot plenty of charities out there like that so yeah anything that we do that we do raise will be going to that um have i forgotten anything like the like, like subscribe share, all that yeah subscribe even a screenshot banging it on your instagram instagram story that'll help us massively yeah uh, tag us we in us it. instagram um, at, us. yeah tag us in it um at overrated everything pod um yeah it just it just helps us massively to get more people out there listening to the podcast and raising a, a bit of money for for charity and things uh so yeah yeah nice one mate um until you, right there for the Sunday night. you did well man you did well considering yeah. you played 99 holes of golf this yeah well I've, I've got a blister like an actual <laughs> blister i've played 99 holes of golf which theoretically Sort of, I'm playing at the minute. I'm trying to shoot under 100 per game, so that's a thousand shots over seven days. If if, if you're having if you're having golf problems, I feel bad for you, son, because you've played 99 <laughs> holes and a bitch ain't one. Hey, that's, that's a good place to end it because I'm in agony with my thumb. <laughs> right, see you next week with uh, Irvine Welsh. Thank you very much. Yeah, thanks, guys. <laughs>